U.S. cities remain on alert after an airstrike took out an Iranian terror leader in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Iran is vowing revenge. And President Trump tonight says he took action to stop a war, not start one. KKL 9's Randy Pays joins us now with the latest on the rising tensions in the Middle East. Randy? These are dangerous times. Former CIA Director and Defense Secretary Leon Panetta says the United States is closer to war with Iran tonight than any time in the past 40 years, while President Trump says it's exactly the opposite. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. This morning, President Donald Trump said he made the decision to kill General Qasem Soleimani because U.S. intelligence learned the general was plotting to kill American diplomats and soldiers. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo put it this way. He was actively plotting in the region to take actions, a big action as he described it, that would have put dozens if not hundreds of American lives at risk. Uh, we know it's, it was imminent. On CNN tonight, Washington Post columnist Josh Rogan said his government sources elaborated on the kinds of attacks Soleimani was planning. Another attack on the embassy, missile strikes on American forces in Iraqi bases, and the kidnapping of American citizens, which helps explain why the State Department told all Americans to leave. Based on that intelligence, according to my sources, they, the, the strike was authorized and then it was taken at the first opportunity. This is what's left of the two vehicles carrying Soleimani and his aides. Veteran CBS News Pentagon correspondent David Martin reports the U.S. military was directed to take out Soleimani after an American contractor was killed a week ago on an Iraqi military base. And American jets retaliated with airstrikes against the militia, which fired the rockets that killed the American. U.S. intelligence sources said the militia was directly controlled by Soleimani. And at the same time, U.S. intelligence was picking up what Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley told reporters off camera was clear and unambiguous intelligence that Soleimani was planning a campaign of violence against the U.S. I'm not going to say anything more about the nature of the attack, but know that this was not just in Iraq, it was throughout the region. Intelligence sources tell CBS News Soleimani was in Syria on Wednesday and then flew to Lebanon. On Thursday, he left Lebanon for Iraq. When his plane landed in Baghdad, two Reaper drones were circling overhead. Soleimani and a top militia leader got into a sedan. The rest of the entourage climbed into a van. They set off down the airport road when four Hellfire missiles struck simultaneously, two for each vehicle. But while President Trump took the shot, Former officials from both the Bush and Obama administrations told CBS News they had chances to kill Soleimani years ago and decided against it because the risks of escalating violence outweighed the benefits of getting rid of him. President Obama's former CIA director and defense secretary Leon Panetta told CNN why the Obama administration didn't target Soleimani. I think the reason was that uh, he was a, a general uh, in Iran, uh, and uh, it was difficult to say that we ought to pick one general to, uh, to go after and try to uh, execute in some way when you're dealing with the entire country as a threat to the United States. That's what the United States needed to focus on, was the threat from Iran, not just one particular individual. Tonight on CNN, Iraq's ambassador to the UN and the highest ranking Iranian official in the United States said the killing of General Soleimani is clearly an act of war. And he said Iran will act at a time and a place of its own choosing. And then he added this ominous warning. The response for a military action is a military action. You know I mean, uh, by whom, by, uh, you know, when, where, that is, that is uh, for the future to, uh, to, to witness. Tomorrow, pro-Iranian demonstrators are expected in the streets of Baghdad, while supporters of General Suleiman are gathering in the streets of Tehran, where a three-day mourning period has been declared. In both countries, Iran and Iraq, tension is high. Yeah, no doubt, Randy. Thank you.